great relationships don't just happen. If you want one, you've got to make it yourself. But how do you do that when you didn't have the models and examples that you needed? Some of us were lucky enough to have seen one or two solid marriages growing up. But that's not really enough since what worked for them isn't necessarily going to work for you. And lots of us just started doing marriage and love and relationships the way we thought was expected, only to find ourselves in a love story that's, I don't know, okay, I guess? There's no right one right way to do love. That's good news. You can let go of all that old baggage and craft a marriage or partnership or chosen family or polycule or whatever that is so much more than okay. It's really the creation of a life that finally feels like home. At least, that's what doing this has felt like for me. Me too. And getting here wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for us. We learned the hard way, the very hard way, that love is a verb. And the actions of love don't just come naturally. We all need skills and tools and support to do this well. And that's completely normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, research psychologist and ASEC certified sexuality educator. I'll be sharing personal stories, evidence-based research, and case studies from my work as a relationship coach. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Um, I'm a human doing my best to make relationships my biggest priority in life. We're going to dig deep and offer vulnerable conversations between us as we keep learning how to customize our love and keep growing as individuals. As individuals. As individuals. And as a couple. And as a moresome. It's all very interesting. And we're also going to have some amazing nuanced conversations with experts who can help you learn more ways to design the life you want. And if you find yourself saying at any point, damn, I really needed to hear that while you're listening, I would love it, we would love it, if you would head over and give us a quick rate and review on iTunes. It really does help other people find us, and we'd be so grateful for that. Now, it's time to reimagine your relationship from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hey. Hey. Good morning. And good morning. And we're recording this episode um, from our tent. It might be a short one because it gets kind of hot here in the it morning. It gets a little <laughs> hot here in the morning. It's beautiful in the evening. Um, I wanted to talk about designer relationships today. Um, so designer relationships, the way I define them, it means a designer relationship is about creating the relationship that is exactly what you want but there's a trick <laughs> because you're in relationship with other people. Oh, yeah. So right. I wanted to talk about the messiness that comes with knowing that you want more. You want to be either creative. You want to, you know, there's some some part of your relationship you want to be different or you want to really open up an experiment or um, you're just not feeling like the way the relationship is right now is necessarily working. You don't even know exactly what it is you do want. But you've heard about creative monogamy or designer relationships, or you've heard about opening up, or you know somebody who has. And so you're curious, is like, is that a solution? But wanting your relationship to be different, well, a really common thing that I hear from people who reach out to me is, I know I need something to be different. I know I'm ready for change. One, I don't even know, I don't even understand how to get my partner on the same page with me about wanting change. About wanting change, let alone what change? Exactly. Uh Exactly. So, yeah, there's, um, there's some trouble there because, well, I mean, you've been there before. I've been there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens when you hit a wall in the relationship that you're in and you have to break news to someone? You have to like, you have to tell them this This is is what's happening what's happening and yeah and what are we going to do about it as a in this relationship yeah i i mean there are big changes and big adventures that can happen from the outside so you and i have gone through big changes that were we didn't have any say in them Um, my brother got sick and we didn't have any say in him getting sick and we were we both had a set of values that led us to make a set of decisions to help him through that time that that happened to us sort of together in many ways 
But sometimes a big change that comes along really sort of blossoms from within one partner or another. And I'm talking yep. about couples here because that's a lot of people who come to work with me are in a couple. They're, they are happily in their couplehood and they've had an experience relatively recently or sometimes it's been going on for brewing for a couple of years where they realized that they they're experiencing a change. And so it doesn't feel like something's happening from the outside. This isn't about some external actor like saying a change has to happen. This is about no one of us has changed is experiencing change. And that transformation well I always say relationships are systems and systems respond yeah. to change. Mm -hmm. They do. So the change. So the changes that we experience is, while we're on our own individuation path, they open up our relationship to. To change. To change. To, yeah. And I feel like this is bad news for some people. I occasionally I'll get somebody who um, shows up for a connect call with me and even though they've tried a hundred times to tell their partner or their spouse, hey, um, this isn't working. Their partner just isn't able to hear it. Um, and that was my experience. My, my first uh, marriage was a lot of me saying, um, something's, something's changing. I'm experiencing a big change here. Help. I don't know what to do, mm -hmm. but, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to change too. Um, and that, I think it's okay, but I really, I believe that this is a sticking point for so many people in getting to a spot where they feel like their relationship is actually working for them, is working for them at all, That's, right? And which is the goal, right? That's, we want, we want the relationship to be working for everybody involved in it. Right. So you started with the concept of designer, designing, designer relationship. Yeah. And uh, what are the elements of design for a relationship? Yeah. And right away, I'm thinking of what are our values? There's what our what is what do we want? That's important. Um, and then there's our values. And what may, got me thinking about that was your example of when your brother got sick. We didn't have explicit conversations about our values, but based on our, you know, I look back and based on our behavior, our our values were aligned. Right. You could see that in our, the right. choices we made. Um, and so the values let us come to a very, a very fast paced decision. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yep, this is how we will behave in this situation. Um, and we didn't know whether it had an end point or right. like, we couldn't really tell what was going to happen, but the values did provide that foundation. Right. And that's sort of an ideal scenario, right? Um, but I see Where people. Where our values are aligned yeah, and, and it's our just, we just can just go. It's, it's yeah. obvious. But I see people who are experiencing an inner transformation, an inner shift, an inner awareness. Maybe they're feeling like they're waking up. Maybe they're noticing that they, they actively feel like a different person. Mm -hmm. But your partner isn't always ready to hear that when it's happening, right? And so something you and I promised each other during our, um, our wedding ceremony, which it's still shocks me that we even knew to do this because we were still learning a yeah. lot. Like we were still we making were. some serious mistakes yeah. around designing our relationship. Um, but we promised each other to be more invested in growth and each other's growth process, be each other becoming an individual than we were to the idea that this relationship had to stay looking a specific way. Yes. And I, I it's a hard promise to make in a way. It is. It was stepping away from something that I had totally taken out of the the monogamy culture. And it wasn't even about it wasn't about polyamory or non monogamy or anything. It was about individual growth. But what I had taken out of my previous monogamous relationships well was that um, don't ask don't tell relationships. don't ask don't tell relationship. It was that the relationship had its own presence, its own <laughs> rights and values separate to e the values of either of the people in it. And so it was this anchor, like not in a good way, but in a, is a ball and chain, like not being able to step forward because that would change the relationship and the relationship had its own identity. 
So, okay, so here's how I see this show up when couples come to me is the relationship has has taken on a life of its own um, in a way where it it now actually overrides the individual desires, wants, needs right. of both people. Yeah. And sometimes that has been very comfortable for a long period of years. So oftentimes what will happen is people get married, they, they, they make a, a full connection with each other, and they set up a standard, right? They set up their, their, their basic, usually implicit agreements about how things are going to go. And then they, that's the flywheel. It got going, right? Now it's, now it's flowing and now stuff's happening, right? We're building businesses or we're getting new jobs. We're going to school and we're having kids and all that stuff. And the relationship, having that structure and that weight and that, what I heard you describe was autonomy. The relationship autonomy, itself, right. having this sort of autonomous rightness, goodness, truth, right? That's the flywheel and it, and it keeps going. And yet, in order to keep a flywheel going... Something has to provide some input of energy, energy into right? It. It, mm -hmm. Energy has to go into it. And frequently I will see people where nobody's put energy into that system for a while or the energy that they're putting in is kind of rote. It's like out of obligation. And that's where I met you. Yep. You were still putting energy into your first marriage. Um, and when we first started um, really seeing each other as as close friends and intimates it was you were putting energy in but it was out of obligation right um and neither one of us can speak to what our partners were feeling but obligation ran both of our relationships a lot and that's if i could go back and do something over one of the things i wish i could do is get clear on where i was acting out of obligation to preserve this this autonomous force of the relationship yeah. versus Showing up every day, knowing that we're all changing, we're all growing, and that's the norm. The norm is change and growth. Because when people come to me and that flywheel is going and it's been carrying on, but it's maybe, it's, it's just obligation, so it's sort of moving at a slow pace and the, the relationship isn't feeling juicy and fast and exciting. But one or both of them may have experienced transformation on their own but they have no idea how to put it into the system. Right. So maybe one person has decided to get really involved in their passion projects and maybe their, their creative work has taken off. Maybe another person has started delving into their, their independent sexuality, perhaps completely within their monogamy bonds, but is really enjoying feeling pleasure in their body and looking for what lights them up. And that's all great. But because those things haven't been brought back into the relationship over and over again in small ways. Oh yeah, that right. That flywheel's rolling, man. It doesn't have. There's no room. Right, and I, then you, so you bring this, crap, this big I, thing instead of the little independent individual little pieces along the way. You get to a point, and you're like, well, let me see if I can jam this on, and the flywheel just spins it away, just yeah. to extend the metaphor. Like it's too big, and it it either stops the flywheel entirely, or is rejected. Yeah. So let me see if I can put this, give a real example. Yeah, cool. So I worked with a couple recently who was, um, they were struggling because they still really, really enjoyed each other at a core level. They really, really loved each other. Um, and they and they really enjoyed the life that they had built. But they both know that the life that they had built is also, like it has to change. They're in the empty nest phase. Um, it's, you know, it's coming upon them. And so stuff has to update and change. But over the years, the massive amount of energy each of them has had to put into running their own businesses, parenting their kids, taking care of life, all of that means that they hadn't necessarily really made time to know who each other was in a growing, um, hey, you're a new person every day sort of way. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I understand why. You know, medical things happen and business stuff happens. We go through, we went through the 2008 recession. We've gone through a pandemic. There's all this stuff. And so we come home each day and it can feel great to just be like, good. Here, I'm going to pretend like mm -hmm. none of that change is happening. And I'm going to just relax with you. But this couple found that after, yeah, a whole bunch of life going by, it was time for a reimagine. It was time for a reimagine because otherwise they were really having a relationship with 
like ghosts, like people who they used to know oh, that they yes. were. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a, it, that feels, that resonates with me, the idea of uh, having a relationship with who somebody used to be. And I feel that in both directions. I know that I have done that to other people. Right. Uh, and people have done that to me. And it's, um, it, it's tough to have a relationship like that, to get to who we all each actually are. Right. So and then it becomes performance. What performance. Okay, say more about performance. Well, yeah. So, um, so speaking from my own experience, somebody, um, I, I have a collection of people in my life who treat me like I haven't changed uh, from, you know, when I was a child, let alone from last year. And so they treat me in a particular way. And there's this implicit pressure to, for me to respond, to fill in my side of this, yeah. this, um, expectation, this, yeah, the expectation. I was going to say obligation, but it isn't, they don't, they can't obligate me to do it, but there's this social pressure of, of treating me in a way. And I know how I used to respond to that. And I know that if I do, I know how they're going to behave back. And, and it's so plot cohesion, it's plot cohesion. Right? Like, yeah. They don't want any plot twists. <laughs> right. We're all together in this. Right. And so if I need you to behave in the way that I expect you to behave because yep. that's how I'm writing this story yep. that is my world. And it's part of my the stability of my world. And it right. can be... But you stay the and same. It, and I get it because it can be very uncomfortable to find out that something that you were relying on isn't true anymore. Right. Um, right. It's, and so, of course, I mean... Even I, if the new thing is good... Even if the Even transformation if the, has changed <laughs> yes, in a great direction to actually appreciate, it can feel destabilizing. Yeah. That reminds me of what happened with this couple. So they needed to reimagine. And what I noticed as they showed up week after week. So we did a relationship reimagine, which is a 90 day program that I take people through. And it's fairly intense because we need to drop into the deep stuff quick. But the reimagine process means having to notice not just where your partner's changed, but also where you have. Yeah. And what I noticed is with this, with this particular couple, each of them had a breakthrough moment. And I would ask all of the listeners, if you're listening to this and you're thinking you can't have a breakthrough moment, and just imagine this. When you wake up, who are you today? Who are you today? Ask yourself that question. And because each of them had moments where they saw themselves fresh and new because they were reimagining the relationship because they were in the container. So if you can wake up and really take five minutes right upon waking up to just consider who am I today? Mm. Who am oh, I yeah. now? What is it that I want? And you might need to do this on a day where you don't have to be in all of your obligations just to allow enough space to really question it. There's no one right way to design your relationship. And lots of people, actually about 25%, according to a recent national survey, are interested in some type of open relationship. But how do you know if you are ready to open up happily? Not everyone is, and that's no problem. I've got a 60 second quiz that will give you the answer. And even better, You'll walk away with your next step, whether you're good to go or not so much when it comes to opening up. And this is no BuzzFeed nonsense. I personally designed this quiz from my years of academic research. Go to joliquiz.com. That's J-O-L-I-Q-U-I-Z.com and find out if you're ready to open up happily and what to do if you are or if you're not. That um, makes sense because I know that, yeah, the the pressures and obligations of jobs and parenting and, and various other kinds of relationships right. can make it feel pretty tight to like, like there isn't a lot of space to imagine something new in you. Right. Because where, what are, what's everybody else going to do about that? Right. So when you do this, because you're great at it, you, um, you are really good at noticing change and transformation in other people. You're, you're, I okay. think <laughs> my experience of you is that you're really I good. I hear the emphasis on other. <laughs> yeah. You're really good at noticing it for other people. Mm -hmm. 
but you have struggled to notice it in yourself. You, um, you often will, will hold on to an image of yourself too. So I hear you talking about people from your past who treat you like your past version of yourself. The interesting thing to me is you often, um, imagine that you're worse than you are. You imagine that you haven't done the growth work that you have. Like you forget to update your identity. This is my experience of you. Yeah, I like, see what you're saying. I don't always trust it. I'm like, oh, maybe that was just like I had a good day versus I've learned how to be like I've grown. And, right. I, and now I'm, my, my values have shifted, my choices shifted. Or maybe I just had a good day. <laughs> so that's how right. I approach it. And it leaves me in a place. I think this might be where you were getting. It leaves me in a place to respond um, more quickly to other people's expectations of who I am based on who I used to be. Like, okay, I'll just, I'll be that person for them and for me. Right. Uh, versus. And the reason I think this matters is because if we're talking about designer relationships and wanting to create um, to create a relationship that works for the us that we are now, right? Right. Then I need to be able to update my idea of who I am and who you are. And I find that different clients respond differently, right? Mm -hmm. So some sure. people are really, they're really able to, to turn to their inner world and like, and notice the changes and transformations mm -hmm. that have happened for them. And some people are more easily able to notice how their partner has transformed and changed. And really we want to have both. We want to have access to both. You're, yeah. you notice change in me really, really well. Um, and I, it's been key to me that you've reflected that to me in quiet moments of appreciation in, in moments of like saying, I, I see, I see what you've done. I see how you have, you know, like noticing, Hey, I see you went to school and you learned these things, but more importantly that you incorporated that into who you are. And when you reflect that back to me, I'm able to really embody my transformation, really embody my growing up, my continued growing up in a way that I don't know I, I could. Because I like to celebrate. Or at least it speeds the, it up. Yeah, well, I, I, I hope, my, my intention is for it to be positive feedback. Celebrate the changes, celebrate the, the growth. And, and observing how, and, and this is because I know you, observing how those things line up with changes I know you've been wanting to make in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. if I if I show you so that I see it. that I and then you can see that you're not just imagining it, which is one of you you were talking about how I don't see change in myself. I don't always notice in myself because I can easily imagine that something else is happening. But if somebody else says this is what I see independently, it helps strengthen so, the, yeah, the the so belief that oh this actually did happen. Okay. So I want to tie some of this together because so we have I have people who come to me all the time and I know that you're out there listening to this because you care about the idea of designing your relationship. And in order to design the relationship you want, there are a bunch of raw ingredients you're going to need. You're going to need to know who you are. Not a small feat. <laughs> yeah. your, your partner ideally would know who they are. Um, you're going to need to commit to a path of growth and change because designer relationships, um, the whole concept of having a custom-made creative relationship is you're going to create your relationship. You're going to create your relationship. So we got to know what we're working with here. Yep. And so I think some of the basic tools that we talk about quite a bit on this show would come in handy. Um, doing a values exercise is yes. one. Oh yeah. Doing your values exercise, which just means, you know, you can turn to, I think, is it chapter seven in the book? I'm not sure which, which chapter it is. Um, in project relationship, there's a values exercise. Know my, know your values. Know your relationship's purpose. Get clear uh, on what your relationship's purpose, and purpose is. So, key. so we've done previous episodes on this. You can go back and listen to um, just episode 65 even. We talked about values and purpose and getting clear on what your values and purpose are. But also, you can commit to being in a growth process all the time. Because that's a leveling up. Most of us get married hoping for stability, right? Most of us join our households or whatever for stability. And sometimes we mistake 
stasis. Yes, right. I, you know, I know staying I did. exactly yep. the same for stability. But creatively making your relationship what you want means that you got to be okay with the fact that it's going to be dynamic stability. Right. We're sta- we're stable standing still, but we can also be stable walking. Right. Yeah. Or stable moving in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. This is reminding me of the fact that, you know, there are stable dynamic systems all over the place. Um, but we don't pay as much attention to them. They're like, they look, the dynamic part (laughs) looks like the part we should pay attention to. It's moving. That's probably going off down a tangent, but so I'm hearing that values exercise, purpose exercise would be useful. And the other thing that's coming to mind is rituals. Oh yeah. When you want to set up a, a new relationship agreement, when you want to come to like, uh, Hey, okay, let's design this relationship. It's always going to be important to figure out what it is you're agreeing to. Uh huh. And, you know, sometimes yeah. when I talk about relationship agreements, people are like, okay, great. Give me like the long checklist. What should we, what kind of things should we agree to? And that's important. And that the more, the more you can get into the details of your relationship agreements. Yeah. Great. You're going to get more, you're going to move more stuff from the implicit column to the explicit column. And I love that. However, there's some really basic stuff that you might want to work on too. Some really basic Hey, can we agree to growth as a primary, yes. you know, movement um, in our relationship? Or can we agree to acknowledging that we're going through change? Could we agree just to being present for each other and putting our phones down when we spend an hour together each day? I read a, a study somewhere not too long ago that said that the average couple spends like four minutes alone each day. Okay. And that's just not a lot. That is not enough to maintain a dynamic and stable system. No, no, that's it's that's not, not going to sustain a dynamic so, stable system. And what I hear you saying is uh, the the explicitness of agreeing. What what are we doing? Bringing bringing out and saying directly. Yeah. What what your goals are? What your purpose and values and uh, growth orientation are? And yeah, simply them, getting clear. And I say simply getting clear, but I don't think it's simple for most people. And it wasn't simple for me to start making my expectations into actual negotiated agreements, right? Implicit expectations are the polar opposite of explicit negotiated agreements. But it's not easy for most of us to do that because it means... It means risking asking for what we want and showing who we actually are now. Yep. So what's something these days that's been challenging for you to bring to me over and over again as you've been growing and changing? A challenging thing to bring to you. Um, I don't know if this is the kind of answer you're looking for, but I still struggle to bring to you um, the things that are going to cause you trouble. <laughs> Like to to bring you things that I know are going to um, make you feel like things are more complicated or that they're um, they they feel like so anytime you think you might be upsetting that stable yes yeah that's sameness. I have trouble bringing yeah, yeah bringing that stuff in yeah yeah I. I hear you and I would say, yeah, that is, I I see the trouble that that is for you. And I see how I reinforce that fear by, um, by sometimes responding in ways that show you that, yeah, it is going to be a little scary when you bring me one of those things. Yep. And I have occasionally made the the statements like, okay, I'm going to commit myself to, uh, to bothering you, to Mm -hmm. upsetting you when, when I have, like, I'm just going to. Because I ha- if I don't say it out loud, like there's so much in me that's like, oh, all caretakery and let's keep this all, let um, uh, nice. You know, the, I guess the so. etymological root of nice is ignorant. That's very important to well, know. Because so what th- I'm thinking that's, is, yeah. So sometimes you don't want to tell me things, and then because you would rather leave me in blissful ignorance, you'd rather leave me thinking that the thing, everything's staying the same. Nothing's the same. We're in a tent. We're in a tent. <laughs> um, no, it, it's but yeah. Um, I appreciate so, so that's you, a thing the that I want struggle you with. have behind there, right? It's it's partially for you and partially for me. But yep. the but the 
but it doesn't work because all that happens is that stuff builds up. Right? So it that's, up that's a thing that bigger. I miss about that is I'm like, okay, right now I see that you are currently dealing with a whole bunch of things and I don't want to give you another one, but by holding it back, it gets bigger. And so later, okay, you're not dealing with all, all these other things now, but here's one that's huge. Right. <laughs> so that doesn't work that's in it. fact. And I forget that. And I'm like, no, this, this will be better later, but it's not gonna be the same later. It's gonna be worse. It's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be more of the thing I'm trying to avoid. Right. Oops. So a habit in our relationship is that I will bring you a million small things so you can feel like you're being constantly you know dripped on by one drip of water you can feel that and but you are more likely to hold on to a whole bunch of stuff and then just like whoosh you need to tell it all to me here's the brontosaurus rib from the flintstones yeah a little overwhelming yeah right and so those are different ways of being in the world and in all likelihood neither of us is going to remarkably shift that we're in our mid 40s mid 50s like we're we're not we're probably going to maintain those habits unless we make a really pointed effort to change them. So even just now hearing you talk about how you don't want to bother me is a reminder to me to invite you to bother me. Oh, to invite you to bother me, which is why we have some of our rituals committing to your part of that, those exchanges. Right. So, yeah. So, Mm. and Um, So inviting in the discomfort, but also the rituals give us a time when we are supposed to bring these things up, right? right? right. So we have a couple of things that we do. We have our our, um, recalibration talk, our weekly, um, some people call it a a relationship check-in. I call it celebrations and recalibrations because I want to focus on the way that we're celebrating each other um, and also reset for the following week. Yeah. but we also have some big ones. We have some big markers. We have our three-year renegotiation of our whole relationship. And we have some monthly things that we check in about because they're about running a household together. They're the things that, yeah. All of those ritualized, of those, those things like, and here's rich- how we do this. We do it in a specific yeah. place. We usually have a specific food attached to each of these things. Yeah. Um, and having those rituals helps us create intentional space and i've noticed that for you the intentional space is especially helpful when you want to bring to me something like so i don't know whether i want to do the particular work i'm doing anymore or i don't know whether i'm i want to have our relationship look this particular way something big like that the ritual creates space for it and i would say that i have a similar thing um the ritual space because my stuff is little 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 it can feel like i've never really coalescing it into something so, so the ritual right, space gives me a, a chance to reflect a little bit and bring it to you in a more cohesive way okay that's a good list of stuff so these are some ways that we deal yep. with creating our designer relationship and letting ourselves be dynamic creative individuals who are who yes. are in relationship and, and support each other. If yeah, you're you know. curious about the relationship, reimagine, absolutely, you can reach out to me. You can go to talktojolie.com and apply to work with me if you're interested in the relationship reimagine. It's a reimagine. great conversation. Yeah, and either way, we'll learn whether, you know, working with me is, a, is the right fit for you. Um, and if you're not there, but you're ready to take a step for yourself, I invite you to start today. Don't wait. Relationships are messy, and that's good news, and I say that all the time, but in this way, for real, yeah. And keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I have one more thing to share with you. If you want to pop over to listentojolie.com, that's just listen to Jolie, J-O-L-I dot com. You can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Yeah, get the guides. They're easy to implement conversations that will empower you to create the love you want. It's my mission to make everything talk aboutable. Sex, love, losses and learns. Everything is talk aboutable. <laughs> she managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my lovers, my friends, my family, and you all on a podcast, out loud. Relationship work really can change everything. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way you'd hoped, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. 